Uh, what is Splunk? Splunk is a search engine for machine data. Okay, Splunk can takes the data from any devices like mobile, uh, sensors, computers, tablets, routers, firewalls, and etc. Uh, uh, it does the log monitoring on the unstructured data and uh, trigger an alert based on the keywords and conditions. Splunk does support for analytics like statistic analytics, operational analytics, predictive analytics, and sentimental analytics. So, are you new to and uh, new to an uh, analytics platform, or do you have a knowledge on the analytics platform? Um, well, I have some knowledge because I've been in on the environment at work now for um, a year. Um, as far mm -hmm. as just analytics in analytics in general, I came out of um, Oracle and Microsoft. Analytics. So over the past okay. year, year and a half, uh, it's like a year and a half ago, I started doing Splunk feeds for a contract I was on, but I didn't have a. I had not a lot of time on it. Then over the past year, I, my new employer, cross is trying to cross train me. So I did get into the um, some of the analytics and set up some of the technical an, uh, technical apps um, in our in our dev environment. Um, so mm -hmm. it's kind of a, um, in my new role, I'm a, I'm a little bit higher level. I don't get as much hands-on. So I have to understand it, but ne necessarily do the work. So oh, most of okay. my hands-on, I, I go home weekends and I set up my own environment at home. But then at work, I have to be like a cross-section of knowledge, if that makes sense. OK, yeah. Uh, uh, perfect. Okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. So, uh, I hope uh, you uh, you know the meaning of uh, sentimental analytics, right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, see, uh, Splunk does an uh, Splunk does an end-to-end -end monitoring analysis. Okay, for any application. Uh, let's consider uh, an uh, example where we have a uh, amazon.com okay uh, sure. there we have multiple uh, uh, multiple sections like we have the front end we have security logs uh, we have the apache or you can see middleware log and then we have the databases logs right so yeah. uh, the front end uh, where we can see the ui part and the uh, UI related things, all the web pages and all those things. Uh, the security logs contains the uh, uh, login credentials. Uh, they will capture all those uh, uh, firewalls, login and all those things. Yeah. And middleware, uh, middleware is an uh, your uh, API kind of thing. Okay. Where uh, where it will be uh, uh, interacting with the database and getting result to your front end. Okay. Where the uh, where the actual data is. Uh, are getting low and the last we have something called as the database log so see uh, for each and every applications data will be stored in a database or a uh, files okay but um, if you uh, consider large volume applications they always store data into the databases okay nowadays they are using a big data uh, technologies to store the data okay so we monitor the splunk monitors end to end like from front end security logs middleware and database logs okay uh, let's take an example uh, suppose you have a website okay and uh, you have hosted the a cloud okay and your web page is not getting loading the web page is getting loaded from morning okay but at evening time, suppose at 8 p.m., your website stopped working. Okay, where will you go first? What will you see first? From where your troubleshooting will get started? Um, I would go to the the system log and the web app log. Okay, so you will see at the front end first, right? Key whether your web page is working or no. Okay. After that, you will check the middleware logs because that is the main core logic from where your application is talking to your database, right? And right. finally, you will go 
APIs and check any data related issue. Uh, API is working, UI is working, but uh, the API is not able to get the data. It means that there is some problem with the database, right? Yeah. Suppose if you have this, yeah. So suppose if you have this all data in one, right? You can do lot many things. You can get, you can catch the issue. See, you will uh, see if you go with the traditional. You will spend some time on the front end. You will spend some time on the middleware logs. You will spend some time on the DB logs, right? You will open those. You will see where is the error, where it is going, and all the stuff. But if yeah. you put this into Splunk, if you put this into Splunk. Wherever you see a large number of spike in your database log, it means that there is something is going wrong, right? Right. And instead right. of going and checking it manually, Splunk can tell you exactly where is the error. Right. Then we can so just search on the problem, right? Yeah. So uh, that's what the Splunk does. Okay. Splunk does an end-to-end -end monitor of your application. It's not like uh, you can just monitor the data stocks, okay? So this is the best example. I, uh, whenever I take the classes, I uh, provide the students. Okay, hope this is clear to you. Okay, let's go to the work. Uh, okay, how Splunk works, basically. So uh, uh, first Splunk index the data, uh, run the searches on live data as it streams extract the fields and get the meaningful information from the machine data. We will write the searches which will internally get into a scheduled alerts. You should write the searches and you should schedule the alerts. Create custom dashboard from any searches or the correlations or enrich analysis with the lookup to other enterprise data sources like suppose if you have uh, uh, customer data okay and those customers are doing some transaction on your site right you will have those data into your web web server logs but you will have the only customer ID in that web access log right you will not be able to get the customer name suppose if we have uh, name sheet or uh, in some database right then you want to correlate them okay and get the meaningful information out of it like correlate like match the match the uh, your customer ID and get the uh, uh, customer details along with the web access log right so you can enrich your analysis with the lookups okay the lookup might be a CSV file. It might be from your database as well. Directly, hit, uh, directly you can match with the database table as well. Okay. Uh, uh, recognize the important events and uh, uh, it can single system to take an action. Okay. So let's see the simple plain view of Splunk. Okay, where how the Splunk will uh, get the data from the multiple applications. You can see here. This is the topmost user, okay, who is getting, who is, uh, who is getting logged into the uh, search head, okay. So this is a uh, distributed environment, okay. Here we have these are indexers, okay. Here we have some uh, uh, forwarders installed, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you know what is in by indexers? What is in by searchers? What is in yeah. forwarders? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm a Splunk power user, so certified power user, so I know what these are. Okay, okay, uh, uh, perfect. So, yeah. So, uh, go to the next slide. Uh, so, uh, did you know when the Splunk started and how is it the journey? Yeah, can I ask you one really quick question on that previous slide? Yeah. It has um, one search head, two okay. indexers and three right. forwarders. Isn't that right. a little bit out of proportion because there's three forwarders to two indexers and only one search head. It seems a little bit like, like three forwarders seems like a lot. 
Okay, so you mean to say that one forwarder can send data to only one indexer? That's what you mean? No, it's more of the ratio. Like, if you only have one search head and two indexers, maybe they're big and I don't know how large their capacity is. Okay. Wouldn't you Please. be bombarding? Wouldn't you only have like, wouldn't three forwarders be bombarding it? Like okay. instead of two. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, let me clear that for you. Okay, so uh, this is just an example. Okay, don't uh, don't take this as a uh, okay. Oh, okay, like an architected. Uh, okay. <laughs> correct. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, perfect example. But for your information, uh, two indexers. Okay, can handle. Okay, see, uh, uh, deployment server will be there, right? We heard about deployment server, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so deployment server okay can become a deployment master for 6000 plus forwarders wow okay okay that answers my question this this, this is in terms of a linux infrastructure if you talk about okay. the windows infrastructure one deployment server can handle uh, 1500 plus Splunk wow. agents. Okay. Okay. And in the uh, newer version, like six point uh, for you, okay. This limit has been uh, increased by eleven thousand Splunk agents. Wow. Okay. I didn't right. know that. Thank you for telling me that. Right, and and that will be based on your requirement, like how much data you want to put it into Splunk. Based on that, okay. you can create your indexes. Okay. Uh, see, in this class, I'm go going to tell you on. See, uh, once you uh, get the requirement, like suppose if you want to build and Splunk infrastructure, right? New, uh, new from the scratch, right? Uh, what other details do you know? Right. So, uh, right. Uh, so all those things uh, we'll take it, uh, take it later in a class. Okay. Uh, but right now, this is just an example of Splunk. Okay. 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 Thank you. Good. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, um, uh, here is another example. Okay. Okay. Uh, I I ask this uh, questions to everyone. Okay. Uh, so you you said you are working on Splunk since one and a half year, right? Okay. Oh um, no, actually, uh, it's a, a year. It's been a okay. a year, a little more than a year. But, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you give an example on day-to-day -day life where all you can use Splunk? Where we use the Splunk, we um, well, we we ingest a lot of um, Windows logs. No, no it's not. Uh, see, I'm not asking about uh, your office work. Okay, I'm just asking oh, oh, you okay. where all in your personal life or your day-to-day -day life other than work okay okay where all you think you might use Splunk um, I, I or might want to use, use it on my maybe on my home computer <laughs> to home computer to do what to do I do a lot of training on my home computer so <laughs> I, I, know I just set up a test environment yeah, yeah see I'm not talking about the work okay can you give me the use cases on your day-to-day -day life where all you can use Splunk? Is that clear now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, where, I, so I, if I, what if I want to know? Um, let's see. Like, what if I want to know um, everything that happens on my computer or something like that? Okay. Okay. Any other than this generic examples? Leave leave, leave about the uh, computer devices now. Okay, and just <laughs> and just uh, just think out of the box and and see uh, where all you can use this Splunk. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe like I have a home alarm system. So what if I wanted to look at the logs for my home alarm system or something like that? Uh, perfect. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me tell you an example. So, so, uh, so, are you a single or married one? 
I'm single. Okay. Okay. Uh, if we, uh, if you uh, uh, could have ch children, then I could have given a better example with that. No worries. Okay. Let's come to the point now. Okay. So, uh, do you heard about the smart home uh, concept? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know if I've heard smart. of that. Probably not. Sm smart home so it's like see uh, you are in office but you want to switch on the AC of your room from the office oh cool yeah that's cool. Right. Yeah, I know what you mean like turn stuff on and off <laughs> right so uh, so it's okay. like uh, uh, so, it's, so that concept is called a smart home okay okay whatever the devices are present in your home you can c control them from anywhere okay which is called a smart home okay now uh, okay you have a home okay uh, in front of that home you have one uh, post box right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay um, and I am expecting one post for, from my friend okay or suppose some uh, some insurance company okay some paper okay I'm expecting that uh, to be delivered today okay but uh, I I can't get it okay so tomorrow so uh, so what I will do I will just go to that box open that box and see if this came or no all right so I will do this every time right I will do this every time okay but I can't do this a whole day right then right right paper is important to me but I can't go and stand in front of the uh, a postbox, right, yeah, right. the mailbox okay. all day. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So, can you use Splunk here to get something out of that box? Something comes, or some uh, a postman comes and drop the letter in that box. Then we should uh, we should get some alerts. Okay. And that mm -hmm. you should, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be notified by some alerts or something like that. Can you use Splunk here to do this alerting part? It depends if there's a sensor on the mailbox or not. <laughs> put a Perfect. put a sensor or a put a sensor and a camera on the mailbox, and then we're all set. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So, uh, so, uh, so what they do nowadays? Okay. So they have uh, they'll put some. Uh, sensors on those uh, in the box okay and whenever uh, something gets dropped into that uh, that information will be passed to a smart home server okay and the smart home uh, server will pass data to the Splunk infrastructure and there is a, a mobile app installed on that uh, home owner uh, mobile okay and the Splunk enterprise will send an alert to that owner saying that you have got some uh, post in your post box okay uh, this will be like an uh, whatsapp alert right okay mm -hmm. so so uh, this is the way you can use Splunk see Splunk is like an I can give a statement which is given to me by uh, my boss uh, my boss in 2011 okay uh, Splunk is like a green grass okay whether you want to construct a villa, whether you want to construct a big house or big apartment or big office, it is up to you. Okay, how you will use it? Become an intelligence by using it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I can give you the nowadays the smart homes and Splunk have become the tie up. Okay. What they does? Uh, they are monitoring the each and every equipment of the house like how much power is taken by AC how we can reduce that right wow all those things oh. all those things will be measured in Splunk and they are doing this stuff now like like I, I can see uh, suppose uh, you have switch on the heater okay and suppose if you forgot to off that right you may have forgot sometimes right last week also I have done and my uh, bathroom heater was on uh, the whole day and night okay that was a huge uh, electricity loss right so when you turn the heater right the data will be taken into Splunk and after 
11 or 12 minutes you can configure this okay after 11 or 12 minutes the heater will send data to your mobile hey boss look your heater is on now and it is already uh, water is hot you can just use it and just switch off the heater wow right so these are the examples where you can use Splunk so Splunk is not only for an IT related okay Splunk can be used everywhere okay uh, let me give you a very interesting example uh, do you have chicken um, yeah, I have two sons that are all grown up. Okay. So, uh, did you ever, uh, did you ever eat, uh, did you ever eat uh, a barbecue chicken? Yeah, we like barbecue chicken. <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, do you know what temperature it has been burned to make that mm -hmm. barbecue test? Um, we used to marinate it. Okay. See, what happens if you more temperature to that chicken, then it might right? Or if you give less, uh, less uh, burn to the chicken, okay, it be, uh, it may be half. Oh, yeah, I see. Like, take the bones out of it. Half grilled and all those things right okay so yeah. what they have done you know there is one barbecue ch ch chicken office in a uh, US okay Wha uh, what they have done he has a uh, there will be a glass of uh, a box right where they grill the chicken right on that corner of the box he has put some devices which can measure the temperature of that box oh wow okay. All right and that device is sending in constantly data to your Splunk environment okay and at the particular temperature we need to burn that chicken and that chef will maintain the temperature by seeing the data on his mobile yeah that's okay? cool right and after some time after some time it will get suppose the chef knows that we need to burn this chicken at this particular temperature for this much amount of time that he can set that time and at that particular time the Splunk will send an alert to the chef mobile saying that look boss this chicken is ready to eat now please stop the heater yeah okay so yeah go ahead that's cool right so these are some so yeah, so the, uh, there are some basic ideas or, or or basic things where this Splunk is getting used. Now this Splunk is getting used everywhere, it's not only the IT. It is used into the uh, sensors, it is used into the uh, security stuff. Uh, last week only we have signed some agreements with the uh, London North Trail, okay. Uh, to uh, to monitor their the tail uh, the railway applications log okay that's what um, uh, we have do, uh, we have done last week so uh, my intention is to tell you that that Splunk can be used anywhere it can be used anywhere not only in IT or not only in the operations or not only at a particular place okay uh -huh. Okay, so let's get started with the uh, latest thing now, and we'll see the architecture diagram of Splunk, how it how it will be basically, uh, generally, and we'll finish it off today. Okay, so uh, the Splunk is and uh, Google for log data. Okay, it does. Um, uh, do you know the SPL, right? Yes, um, I SQL? I know it. Yeah, SPL. I know it for the um, advanced SPL class. From Splunk, so I'm um, pretty pretty good at SPL. Okay, so let's let's move on with this then. Okay, then we have something called as uh, okay. So uh, deployment can happen in the various systems, be the a single server and distributed environment. So Splunk can be implemented in two ways. One is a standalone system. 
second one is a single system and third one is a distributed environment okay so uh, can you brief me about the standalone system single system and distributed environment whatever you know then i can uh, then i'll take it from there um so so you mean uh standalone as opposed to distributed yeah, what is the difference between standalone and the distributed? The standalone would be a, a single, um, single. But it can be multiple. Oh, uh, it can be multiple machines also. Oh, it can. Okay. Yep. Um. So if it's multiple multiple machines, are the but if it was standalone, would there still be distributed searches or would only no there will not be any distributed searches okay it will be an independent searches to an each indexers okay so suppose yeah. like suppose I don't want to I don't want to have an uh, a replication factors or suppose I don't want to replicate my data into a multiple indexes so I should have only one indexer in my environment okay that's my requirement okay so okay. in that case, so in that case, you will get a standalone system. So, okay. so the standalone system uh, is like an your multiple Splunk components are not interlinked with each other. Okay. Okay. That like, yeah, yeah. like so you can say. They're not sharing a clustered search head or a clustered index, or if they're standalone. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Where there is no, where there is no master node, okay, which can control your Splunk indexers and Splunk searchers. So this will be a standalone system. Like you will be having one indexers or one searcher, okay, where the searcher is pulling data only from the indexers, and there is no monitoring part or there is no licensing server separately. The license is only installed on the single machine, which is on indexers. Okay, so this is known as standalone system. Okay, what is meant okay. by distributed environment? Okay, so why why do we uh, why do we need this distribution environment first of all? Okay, why this concept has came? See, earlier they used to have a standalone system. Okay, but why they have came up with the distributed environment is that suppose you you have some three indexers and one search chart, right? And uh, you have you wanted to add one more search chart, right? You will create that search chart, and in that search chart, you will mention the three indexes IP address to search the data from those three uh, other indexes, right? Right. Suppose, so, so suppose if you add tomorrow one more indexer, which is fourth indexer, okay? Right. Then you need to go and update your search chart one and search chart two to pull the data or to search the data from indexes forth as well, right? So right. this is a repetitive work. So it will not scale your application horizontally. Right. Okay. To, to avoid these kind of things, to avoid these kind of things, Splunk has come up with a solution called as distributed environment. Okay. Okay. So in, so in distributed environment, Basically, what happens, each and every Splunk component is linked with each other. Okay. okay. So, we have something called as master node, we have something called as deployment server, we have something called as license server, we have indexers, we have searchers, we have universe of forwarder, we have forwarders, right? So, those kind of things, these are interlinked with each other, okay? And one more thing is that, in standalone system, okay, suppose if you push, uh, suppose I have some 100 GB of data in a file, okay, I said I have three indexes, right, in standalone system. So I will push data into three indexes. Suppose in one indexer we have uh, 40 GB, in another indexer we have 40 GB, and the remaining 20 GB is present in the third indexers, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, now, suppose your second indexer goes down for any chance, by chance, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. How will you able to get the data or how will you able to search full 100 GB of data? What will you do that time? 
they have to do a replication factor. That's what the point came, which is known as a replication factor. Okay, there is something called as a replication factor and search factor in Splunk. Okay, right. That is used only when you are into a distributed environment. Okay. Right. So the factor, the secondary replica and the primary replica will be uh, will be chosen by Splunk master. Okay. Based on your configuration, the data will be get replicated into your multiple indexes. Okay. Now one quick question to you down. Suppose if I put 100 GB of data in this Splunk, it is going to store the whole 100 GB of data into this Splunk? No, it gets stored on the index. The 100 gigabytes is okay. there's a search capacity that's capped by the license that you bought, and then there's the index. There's the index is where the data gets stored. So right. the, the the gigabytes of what gets stored can be greater than what is allowed to be searched. Okay, so tell me one thing. Suppose I'm pushing a hundred GB of uh, Apache log files into Splunk. How much storage I need on that machine for to to process the single day of data? Um, if you're pushing a hundred. GB, you have to have at least 100 GB storage. Okay, so that's uh, that's, if uh, that's if, it depends because if you have a replication factor going on, you no, I don't have any replication factor. I don't have any okay. replication factor. This is a standalone okay. system. But you missed okay. one point. The okay? okay, the whenever you push data into Splunk after crossing the license meter, Splunk will compress the data and store it. Oh, that's true. Splunk will not store the data as it is, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, there is, a, there is a compression factor for each kind of data. Like suppose if you are passing a, a 100 GB of syslog, okay, right. that will take only 40 GB of space from your hard disk to store that 100 GB of data. Yep, you're right, I forgot about the compression. Right? Thank you. So yeah. what will happen, so what will happen, the compression factor is based on your kind of data. Okay, it's not on the, uh, it's not on like, uh, uh, it will be based on like what kind of data you are processing it. Okay. Okay. Third thing. Okay. First thing. Okay. So uh, let's. This is done. So I'm done with this. Okay.